in helping people achieve ecosystem balance then? What do you do? So uh, I look at a lot of those things. So when someone comes in, I like to let like the, my patient or the person that is in front of me speak to me you know, openly and honestly and have a conversation much like we're having right now. I have a lot of questions that I ask and one answer might lead to different questions uh, so on and so forth. And I, and, and honestly, like, I like to let the body inform me, my patient's body inform me on what is actually happening, right? The body is going to tell the truth. A patient might not tell the truth, right? Not everyone <laughs> right. Be, like wants, I mean, I can't tell you how many times, like I'll bring up like, so how are your, how are your bowel movements? And like, people are, like, they're fine. And I'm like, okay, well, what is fine? They're like, it's fine. I go every day. I'm like, okay. And so like, I start probing <laughs> in and I find things and like to them, whatever they have is normal to them and it's fine or they don't want to talk about it, but the body's going to tell me. And if, if I yeah. don't get the information verbally from someone, you know, we look at the tongue, we palpate the abdomen, um, we take a pulse and we can see the pulse tells us all these different things and microsystems in the body. And, and so that reflects the different eco, the ecology of your body, right? Yeah. Energetically, things should be flowing very smoothly. And when things don't flow energetically, like if you have too much like dampness in your body, think of like a puddle that sits there and gets sort of like murky and thick. It's not clear, you know, fresh water. Like your energetics and your body is not going to be able to move things along properly. It's going to be slow and sluggish. And like you might not get what you need in one part of your body and the other part will have too much of something. Right. Plus I might have fruit flies or mosquitoes flying around right. well, I, in my honestly, head all the time. If I'm a puddle. It's good to bring that up because think about if you have like water retention in your body, what, what yeah. happens, right? Um, maybe edema in your lower body or you have this dampness. Microbes that gives life to them and they're mm -hmm. going to start feeding, oh, yeah. populating and feeding. So they'll literally like can eat your flesh. Like they start, wow. they start you know, consume. I don't want that. Right. Nobody wants that. When things are in balance, everything's moving along. We have our commensal, yeah. we have our commensal microbes and we have microbes that aren't so bad. And normally the populations are such where there's competition and they're, you know, they're competing for resources. And, and so nothing gets too out of whack. Uh, you know, even the good ones, if they get overgrown, they're going to cause all kinds of problems too. Like SIBO, for an example, might be one of those. Yeah. Conditions. So those could be good gut bacteria in the wrong place and at the wrong, you know, quantity that, you know, cause all kinds of uh, digestive problems, emotional problems, so on and so forth. Well, and I know you've taught, you've taught me um, since I've been working with you or practicing with you, um, not practicing with you, being treated by you is what I should say, but you've taught me to be so aware of my ecosystem um, and that that in and of itself is so incredibly val valuable to me. And I know that that's something that, that I would love for everybody that's listening to this to be more aware, to pay more attention. Um, I guess to summarize all of this, because you and I could talk for hours about all this stuff because we yeah, geek totally. out quite a bit. Um, what's the takeaway here? How, how can this be something that anybody that's watching this could say, okay, what's my strategy then? What should I do moving forward? Sure. And so there's in the, light of cancer prevention, I should say, in light, light of, of cancer, cancer prevention. prevention, in context of that and in context of health and illness and all these different things all together. So um, there, well, let me just say this. So some things to pay attention to is like connect with your body. There's your physical health and there's your mental health and they are inseparable. One, you know, if one of them is off, it's going to affect the other, right? People get depressed when they're in a lot of pain, right? Or if you're depressed, you're going, you might have a lot of metabolic disorders that happen because you're not going to be as active physically. Uh, and so, you know, you know, have blood glucose level issues and, and so on and so forth. So, so there's your physical well-being, there's your mental well-being, there's your circadian rhythms, your sleep-wake cycle that you want to pay attention to. Um, there's your eating cycle that you want to pay attention to. So there's all these different things that sort of like make up this ecosystem that we live in. And we sort of have to live in rhythm with that because if we don't, then things sort of get out of whack. So one of like, it's, this is almost like a low hanging fruit. It's a lot of people have heard about this. I'm sure there's, inter, it's called um, time restricted eating. 
um, people call, they call it different things, um, intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, so on and so forth. And wait, can I pause you for a sec? I'm so excited that you're bringing this up because I had an incredible conversation with Dr. Peter Adams about this. That's also going to air today if it hasn't already on cancer prevention day. So what you're saying is in conjunction with another talk that we're doing today, which is so yeah. cool. So go ahead. Yeah. So, um, there was a study and I think it was out of US, US, UCSD here. Um, I think Dr. Ruth Patterson, I think I'm getting her name right. Let me make sure that I've got the name right here because I don't want to be one of those guys. Let's see. I yeah. don't want you to be Ruth one of those Patterson, guys either. PhD. Yes, man, I'm glad I got it right. Anyway, so um, <laughs> they were studying you know, the effects of time restricted eating on breast cancer and, and all these things. And they came up with some really interesting information. So um, 13 hours of fasting or in between meals um, can reduce the occurrence of breast cancer or reoccurrence of breast cancer because they did 2,500 patients that uh, recovered from breast cancer. So these were all women that had breast cancer. And um, what they found is that at 13 hours in between your last meal and your first meal the next day, there was about a 36% reduction in reoccurrence. And that's a huge number. Um, wow. Just from doing that. And that's, that's regardless of changing diet, you could eat whatever, you know, across the board, whatever, what anyone was eating did not matter for that number. So um, there's a couple caveats that one, to be really effective, you need to end your meal, your last meal of the day between like seven and 8 p.m., let's say. So like between six and 8 p.m. Um, and that has a lot to do with your circadian rhythm, right? Think about, you know, what's happening in the world. Our body needs to regenerate and recuperate um, at night. And that's when most of that happens. So the, um, apoptosis and the cleaning of all these damaged cells, that's when that happens. So if your mm. digestive system is gunked up with food and working on digesting the liver's metabolizing all these different things in your body, your liver's not going to be able to clear itself out the, all the cells and, you know, particularly the digestive system, but throughout the body are going to be off the clock. They're not going to be resting and cleaning up the way that they're supposed to be doing. And so your body is going to not operate at its optimal uh, level. So it's going to get tired. It doesn't get rest, right? Think of like working out with muscles, right? You work out your muscles. You don't work out your biceps every day, seven days a week, because you want big biceps. If you don't give them time off to, to heal, they, you'll get no gains. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, you'll lose gain. You'll get sick. You'll yeah. get injured and damaged. So part of that is, is the, um, the circadian rhythms that we're dealing with. We, had to, we have to abide by them. Even the bacteria in our gut are abiding by these things. So when we mess with that, when we go to bed too late, when we eat too late, all these different things will, will have a, a negative impact on us. Whereas if we don't, they're going to have positive impact. The, um, by bio, different biomarkers are measured within this as well. So um, inflammation biomarkers, the C-reactive protein were lowered, um, all, to, all sorts of like different metabolites were lowered as well. Well, I appreciate your time. I know this knowledge that you have and that you've shared is a gift for me and it's a gift for everyone listening. Um, I would like to point out that you can find David um, on Instagram at path.ology, P-A-T-H dot O-L-O-G-Y. Um, he definitely will be putting some resources up there for us to take a look at it. And uh, you can also contact him there if you're interested in treating with him because he is a gift to our universe and Lord knows that he came and helped me a few times when I was in the midst of chemo and having some very big difficulties. So thank you from my heart. Thank you from our community. Padres Pedal the Cause couldn't be happier to have shared this time with you and, uh, and have gleaned so much knowledge from, from this moment together. Thanks so much, David. Mm -hmm.